Good morning, uh -huh. or wherever you are. Good evening, I think, most of you, uh, everybody. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a really good time today. I should warn you, I generally tend to go over a little bit. So, you know, if you have to leave right at the hour, might be a few extra minutes. I hope that's okay. Well, I'm going to try. I wore my watch. <laughs> uh, I also wore my orange shoes. You'll see in a minute because I want you to see the footwork. And I, we're going to be outside. Uh, so I live in Lake Tahoe, California. And you don't think of snow in California, but we have snow and I have a beautiful backyard. So we're going to be outside. Uh, or I'm going to be outside. And just a nice example of how we can use our home environments to train in. So um, what I want to say just by way of getting started is that I chose martial fitness and weapons work to, for the theme today. So we're going to be doing a lot of fitness exercises uh, using the Joe, somewhat using uh, the Boken or the, the sword. I hope you'll be up for doing that and that you will be able to use them at home. You'll be able to use them in your dojos. Kids love this stuff. And it's just, you know, to me, fitness is primary. I was personally, by the age of 40, I'm more than that now, uh, I was kind of like an old football player from so many injuries. I had separated both my shoulders, hurt my neck, my back, my ankles, my, you name it, and my wrist, uh, everything I hurt. I got to where I really had to get off the mat and I even had my dojo at the time. So couldn't be okay, then I couldn't even be nage. So I had to stop training, I stopped running, I stopped, uh, I'm a professional golfer. I would quit after five holes of golf, I was so injured. And I took a sabbatical, I went to San Diego, I met a woman named Joanne Kettler who created something called bliss work. Bliss means balance, lengthen, integrate, stretch, strengthen. I did all of her work and all my pain disappeared. I started playing 100 hole golf marathons, 100 holes, up to 212 holes is my record in 12 hours. So these fitness exercises are, I call them fusion because I really put in a lot of Aikido into them, uh, some work from a karate teacher, um, different stuff. So I hope you'll really enjoy and be able to use uh, the exercises. And how did I get so injured? You may relate to this. The way I was trained way back in the 70s, 80s was we just kind of went, uh, 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 sort of Japanese warm ups that are very standard and staple even to this day. And then we ran out and I was young, I was like, you know, I want to be the best woman, throw me, throw me, took so much ukemi, crashed around. It was basically kamikaze Aikido. My body was not prepared, uh, was not warmed up properly. And I didn't have the, the, the core strength and all the things that I needed to, that we need really to perform our best. So fitness is about uh, peak performance as well as injury prevention. Also, of course, injury rehab. So I really want to emphasize that. Uh, Brian Sensei, if you show the slide that I made, This is a quote from O-sensei, who said that techniques employ four qualities that reflect the nature of our world. Depending on the circumstance, you should be hard as a diamond, flexible as a willow, smooth flowing like water, as empty and clear as space. And then here you can see O-sensei, I love these pictures of him kind of bare chested, even one in his hakama training. So, you know, he was very into fitness and you can see kind of some of these different qualities. And I like to use warm ups and fitness exercises not only as it's not like warm ups and then we do Aikido. We are doing Aikido as we're warming up. All our principles of being centered and balanced and integrated, uh, stretched, strong, and these kinds of qualities when we're kind of hard, where we're flexible, where we're smooth and flowing inside, oh, this incredible open, uh, sort of enlightened space inside of, of key of our energy flow. So that's what we're gonna be working with. And um, yeah, okay, I hope everybody's ready. That's good, Brian Sensei. I am moving outdoors and I have my signature <laughs> um, visor I'm gonna be wearing today, I think, just because it's really sunny out here. So if you would all uh, just have your training space, you can have uh, your gi on, your hakama if you want, you don't have to, if you just have uh, some kind of sweat clothes, anything that you're really comfortable in. Okay, so <clears throat> welcome to my gorgeous dojo out here in, in nature. Let's all bow in. Okay, so for our first exercise, I just wanna give you something you can do in a minute to get your body going and connected. So we're gonna move our wrists around and feel the muscles, tendons, everything stretching. Let that start to move into your forearm, your elbow, feel the connection and get those things moving. 
your shoulders. Listen to your own body. I'm doing what feels good for me, but I want to articulate my joints. Oh, now I'm starting to feel my back muscles. That's a good thing. Oh, just came into my chest and my ribs. So I'm feeling connections. Wow, my neck just starting to loosen up. Back, I'm getting rid of that. Neck is loosening up. Mm, loving moving around, opening, breathing, stretching. I can't see you guys. I just trust you're all doing this. Okay, oh, all of a sudden it's coming into my hips. Wanting to stretch and move and circle and bend. Mm. Oh, flowing down into my thighs, my knees. That's going into my ankles. So we're feeling all the connections just got into my feet, soles of the feet, moving around, enjoy your body. Aikido is a very somatic, soma is the body in Greek. We want to be very embodied. And that means feeling the body being here. Okay, we're going to start with, uh, right after that, I hope you're already feeling a little bit loose and warmed up. We're going to do a exercise of adapted from qigong and i bring it into aikido so we're just going to start right here at center feel your heaven and earth connection i really can feel heaven i got a lot of blue sky up there a lot of earth down below and you your body and you your being is the connection of tenshinage of heaven and earth say so in hebrew okay and your spinal column your torso it's not so hard to be really centered Find that vertical gravity line. All your muscles can fall nicely over your skeletal structure, your bones. You can be relaxed. Gravity is a natural down. So that helps us to come into center, legs and feet into ground. And then we'll bring our arms together. Everything we do, you know, even this, I kind of forgot to say, isn't just putting your hands together. You want to feel integration. When you do everything with consciousness, it's all training. So we're integrating, we're bringing together left and right hand sides of our body, even sides of our brain hemispheres. That's sort of the yin and yang qualities that we have. So feel yourself integrated, centered, nice posture. And from here, we're gonna inhale and opening the hands and then exhale. And you can make your breath audible, inhale, Let's make a longer breath this time. Longer breath calms stress, calms the nervous system. A little bit wider, feel your shoulder blades hugging your spine and back, stretching your chest and pecs, opening your heart. And as we close here, come back to center, keep going, long exhale, I'm talking, hands together like a sword, roll your spine down, hands in between your knees. Now open the palms, bring your chi up the center, sword hands to the side, bring them down and a nice strong whew, exhale, sword. Sword hands, inhale up, inhale, long inhale, stretch back, support yourself with the big muscles of your legs. Hands gently come down to your heart, the namaste, exhale. Turn the palms up, inhale. Bending back and exhale, like a gentle rain, a benediction coming down. Soften the shoulders. And we're going to repeat that. Back to center. Nice inhale. Filling with chi, feeling your own energy from inside through your breath. Exhale. Keep the exhale going down to here. Now, bottom of the exhale. Inhale, draw your energy up. Lower the middle upper chakras, hands here to the side, sword hands coming down, drawing your energy down. And now we're gonna inhale, sword hands up, right up the center line, very sharp and clear, integrated. Exhale. Turn the palms up, inhale, stretching back, warming up, let your neck go. Exhale, light, but powerfully down, very light. Let's do that one more time and see if before you make outer movements, you can feel your breath and your inner energy filling your outer movements. I hope that's clear. So you can just kind of go like this and do things, but we can feel connected to our inner energy through our breath. So let's do one like that. Feel your inner energy move before your outer body. We want to connect inner and outer body. 
Nice inhale, stretching, opening, long exhale, calming, centering. Down here to the center, exhale. Inhale, palms up, drawing the chi up. The side, sword hands, nice strong movement. Whew. Inhale. Exhale. Coming into your heart, the eye of Aikido, Aiki. Inhale, palms up. Exhale. One more, this, I hope this isn't sacrilegious. We're gonna blend this with Aikido, with Shinkukyu. So we're gonna come back to center and clasp our hands together right at the center and just shaking at your center. Many of you I'm sure have done Shinkukyu practice. So Sensei of course did it every day, building the chi. And as you shake, what you wanna feel is vibration, the vibrational nature of ki, of energy and feeling the vibration in your body. Now we're gonna let the outer shaking go, continue to feel the waves of vibration through your body. And now we're gonna stretch and move, fluid movement, three circles to the left, three circles to the right, three circles to behind you on the left side, three circles behind you on the right side. And let's make three big circles, bending the knees, stretching, breathing, Feeling that qualities of flowing, willowy, and other direction. Breathing. Good. Coming back to center, let's come here and we're going to uh, interlace our fingers at the top. So drawing the key, the chi from the earth right to the center point and a big key eye at your center. Drop first. Hey! So don't pull with your arms, drop the body. We're gonna work on that quite a bit today. Inhaling to the center. Hey! And one more. Hey! So that's very grounding, it's powerful centering. Just for fun, I love doing this. I did this with the kids in Ethiopia, they loved it. We're gonna come around this away, draw this energy, and you're gonna do a little jump. Hey! <laughs> really offer it up, okay? One more, drawing all that energy. Here and offering it up. Hey, good, shake it out. I hope you're feeling energized, starting to get loose. So we're gonna move on. And what I'd like you to do is make a little fist. Hey, okay, so these are gonna be soft and strong movements combined. We're coming down through center, feet are side by side, drop, working the quads, knees, and hey, okay. So nice, strong movements, bringing the energy in. Please pay attention to your order of movement that you're not tense and tight going here and then dropping lower body, center, upper body. Do a few slowly, lower, center, down. One more, lower, center, down. Do a couple more of those. Okay, so we were here. Now from here, I'd like you to do some ski, some punches and start to get the hips in. So that tense in the shoulder, Feel the power is coming from here and nice straight punch, good focus, good order of movement. Let's do them a couple faster. We're gonna kind of double time. Again, this is fitness. We're warming up, getting a little cardio in there, a little speed in our movements. Good, and one, two, three, four. Let's come across the body, across. So I got my shoes on, you can see heel, turns the hip and gives us some power and extension. Connect your eyes so that you feel your eyes are connected with your movement. It's good for your optic nerve, good for the eye-hand coordination. Let's do a couple double time. Two, one, two, one, two. Little boxer like two, one, have some fun. Two, one, and slower, one, two, three, four. We could add yoko to that move. So we're the same thing, but we're gonna have a nice sword blade, yoko, yoko, yoko. 
Notice so I put my hand at my center every time. It's important to me to always be in my belly, moving from hips and center, belly. Little touch reminds me. Let's do two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Another thing you can do is here, I'll show you here, you can use a combine with an elbow jab. So you can put your hand here for centering or move the shoulder back here. So let's do a couple of those, okay? Try them both. Engages your mind some more. When we say mind body, it's about putting your awareness into your body, into your body parts, into your movements. Good, okay, let's change that. Let's come down to make an uppercut right up the center. So fist right up the center, it's got a little spiral. Uppercut, uppercut. So gather your power from the earth, from your base, right? This would be coming here, which I hate to think about with my injured jaws, but that would really be quite a blow underneath. Let's do a little double time. Double time, it's a little cardio going and works our timing and our reflexes. Gives us a little speed. Good, and one, two, three, four. Let's come around. So get a little hip in there, and this would be a blow from the back of the hand. Come around. Careful if you're getting too much tension up here, keep it coming from this area of your body. Okay. Good, let's do an upper block. And again, always feeling this, building strength, building connection, building flow, proper order of movement. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna bend and touch our leg. Lift, really get a lift here. We gotta get our glutes, hip flexors going. Let's do twos. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do what you can at your own pace. You can do this, that's great. Let's just do fours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. So we're gonna put that together into a little kata. So please stand in right hominy. All right, right hominy. We're gonna do a right punch and come in a little spiral here, a left punch. Then we're gonna lift our leg. Put it down, balance, center, uppercut, uppercut, hike, and really ground that right to your center. Okay, review. Right punch, left punch, lift, uppercut, uppercut, hike. All right, ski, ski, lift, cut, uppercut, uppercut, hike, down to the center. Let's just shift our hominy, left hominy, left hand's gonna be forward. Good posture. Okay, so you're not bending and tense. We're really trying to move here. Some continuation of uh, Shinkukyu, where we have rowing exercise. Okay, so ski, ski with the other side and get a little twist in there. Yeah, lift, put down balance, uppercut, uppercut, right down to the center. Ski, ski, lift, uppercut, uppercut, draw it down. And uh oh, ski, ski, lift, uppercut, uppercut, down. All right, let's have a little more fun with this. It's, uh, we're gonna do twos, but I want you to get a little lighter now, uh, different qualities, like Coach Sensei said. And so we're gonna be a little boxer like here. Ready? One, two, one, two, lift, lift, uppercut, uppercut, down to the center. All right, one, two, one, two, lift, lift. Uppercut, uppercut, hike, down to center. And let's do fours for fun. One, two, three, four. One, two, light, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uppercut, uppercut, down to the center. Let's just do fours, or twos and then fours on the right side. And hope you're having fun. Martial fitness, here we go. One, two, one, two, lift, lift. Uppercut, uppercut, right? 
down to center. One, two, left, left, lift, lift, uppercut, uppercut, down to center. One time, fours, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, four, <laughs> two, three, four, uppercut, uppercut. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I am beating water. Uh, we're going to continue. I can get your jaw, please. And I can't see you, so I hope you're there. I have one more sip of water here myself. Excellent. Okay. So I hope you're having fun. We're going to continue in our martial fitness using our jaw. So what I can do is just hold your jaw. The jaw has vibrational nodes. One third, one third. So that's typically where we hold the Joe, uh, sometimes in the middle, but typically here. And if we change, because the Joe has two sides, which makes it so integrating. I'd like you to feel that, feel how your hands move together on the Joe. And this is the vibrational nodes, one third of the way. Okay, so that's what we're gonna hold. We're gonna be here and we're just gonna lift and down. So body is staying still, we're lifting. And I really want you to lift from your lats, from deep in your hips and pelvis. And if you can notice that you will feel your back muscles, they're called your erector spinae muscles. They're the ones that hold you up. Uh, they're also called the sacrospinalis muscles. So distracting you, we've done probably 10 or 15. You want to do 10 to 25 of these, try doing 100, and you'll be amazed how much you're strengthening those back muscles. Good, let's roll down, hang down, butt up towards the ceiling or sky, and release your neck. Try to stretch your hamstrings, feel everything lengthening out. Good, bend your knees, roll up, roll your spine ups and back. Let that gentle weight of the jaw, give you a little stretch. And let's repeat that. Rolling the spine down and hanging down, stretching, butt up towards the ceiling or sky. Hands heavy, head heavy, release your neck. Let tension pour off, pour out. Then the knees rolling up and nice stretch. Feel the, from here you can feel not only the way of the jaw, the weight of gravity giving you a stretch. Lovely, feet together. Let's have a big extension out to the side. So this is like a big ikyo. Imagine you've got a nage here, giving you a great big ikyo. And then you're gonna push your, that hip out. We call it pulsing, not pushing so much, but you're gonna pulse into that side repeatedly. All of these, I recommend repeat five to 15 times or 10 up to 25. My teacher would say 100. We didn't really do them with a Joe, but the way we would do them. Okay, inhale up, over, nice fluid movement. Really feel like you've got a nage here, giving you a huge ikyo. And then pulse into that outer hip, stretching your side out. And the pulsing is so perfect for Aikido because it lets us become like a human energy pump. We're really pumping, pulsing our ki, our chi through our body. Let's inhale up and over again. This time, I'd like you to take this upper shoulder and just kind of pull it back a little bit, bring it back. So you'll feel a different side stretch. Whoa, and then pulse into that. So this ought to get some other tight places in your lower back, sides, and continue that big ikyo stretch. Good, inhale up, over, take that outer shoulder, take it back, and then hip out, and now pulse into that hip. Whoa, that should be getting some really nice places. By the way, you can do these when you've been sitting at your computer too long at home, yeah? These are great to do and fun to do with your Joe. Excellent. Let's be have our uh, Joe at top and cross your hands and extend up nice and tall. And you're just gonna gently pump your shoulders back, okay? Nothing hard. We're not doing any 
force, that's not Aikido, and it's not healthy for the body. In fact, you can feel why Aikido moving from the inside more softly, fluidly in order is so much healthier. See if you can feel that, I'm really feeling it now compared to if I just do outer force. You might even wanna compare them. This is outer force and I feel myself like smushing up my face, grimacing or relax, find center and let my shoulders move nicely, slide in their sockets. Let my inner energy move first. Good, and then, oh, a really big Ikkyo, and a really big Ikkyo. Awesome. Okay, this exercise I borrowed, <laughs> borrowing from Ayan Khan Sensei. And so what you do, we're nice and centered. We're gonna drop the Joe and catch it. So you, what you're gonna do, you wanna drop the Joe, drop your body and catch it, and catch it, and catch it. Drop it and catch. Feel the blend, your Aiki with gravity and your connection as you do that. Excellent. Let's go to the side. I'm going to my left, same. So, and get your knees going, get your quads going, get your eye-hand coordination going, connection with gravity. Good, Then let's go to the right. Drop. I lost my balance on that one. That's okay, get it back. And good. And from here, we're gonna go back. Please be very careful, don't wanna hurt your back. Don't drop it real far back. Just enough that you can get a nice back bend, neck bend, stretch through the arms, back. Breathing. Good. And this time, Juwaza. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know which way I'm going. I'm listening to my body. Wanted to do two. Oh, wants to go back. Oh, wants to go way down in front. That's cool. Reset. Left. Back again. So go ahead, everybody. Let me have a quick little look. Have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> it's so great to see you. Juwaza. Lovely. Really nice, everybody. Okay, great. Let's come back. So this time, I'd like you to put a Nikyo. We're gonna put the Joe right in front of us and grab it here, Nikyo, like you were gonna do a, like a Gaishi ski, okay? Not a head on, but turn this way. So now I have Nikyo, I've got my right hand and I'm gonna uh, put my left hand on Nikyo and stretch and back, stretch. So we're doing kind of a yoga lunge and back, lunge, apply the Nikyo, Nikyo, Nikyo. Try not to be tense and tight up here, be moving from lower body. As you come back, sit into your back knee. So we're working on weight shift and a nice Nikyo centering, focus. Good, let's change that. So left hand, left hum knee, holding my right, with my right hand, Nikyo, using the Joe, to do a self-applied Nikyo. Good, okay. Here's a total nervous system tune-up uh, in a minute <laughs> using your Joe. So what you're gonna do is hold your Joe. You can hold the top or here. Um, I like to be a little bit in front of my shoulders. Stand close, nice and tall. You're gonna walk straight back from your Joe. Go as far as you can. If you have shoulder issues, you might not get so far or back. Please always listen to your body. Do what's good for your body. But here we are. We're gonna pull, and our feet are close together. They're not wide. They're four to six inches. And we're very centered with the Joe. Keep the Joe nice and vertical so you're getting more extension and length. Pull your hips back away from the Joe. You should feel a really big lengthening in your spine. I like to use the image of making more space between my vertebrae. You may feel a lot of stretch here in your lats and your hamstrings. Good. Now inhale gently, pull your sternum, your chest, your ribs down to the floor or the ground. And repeat that a few times. Inhale gently, pulling down your sternum, chest, ribs. This is not a cat cow thing of yoga. That's kind of doing this. We're just inhale, really focused on the sternum, the ribs. So that sternum center 
directly above your hara, your belly center. Good, now bend your neck and look down at your belly and then just look up. So the only thing moving is your neck, but you're stimulating inside your spinal column, the whole cerebral spinal fluid, which is great for your whole neurophysiological system, transmission of signals from your brain to your body and your muscles. Okay, this time look down, bend your knees, drop your butt, push up and look up. Look down, bend your knees, drop your butt, stretch, push up, look up, and repeat that a couple more times. Feel yourself, keep going. Feel yourself to be a human energy pump. This is really key in chi building and so good for your nervous system. Excellent, good. This time, bend your knees deeply, stretch, and straighten. Strengthen, pull your hips back, lengthen, bend the knees gently, walk back up to your Joe. Inhale, whoa, and bend back. Come back to center. You might feel a titch dizzy, a little bit of seeing a few stars. That's just all that blood and energy flowing. Let that all settle. The way I like to settle and get the weight underside feeling is to use an image that I call let the snow settle. So I have all the snow, right? When it falls, it settles. Or if you take a, and it piles up, oh, we're really grounded. It piles up on the ground. Everything's natural. If you take a snow globe and you shake it up, same way we get all shook up with our worries and our emotions and reactions and everything. So it's all shook up. When you put that snow globe down on the ground, on the table, and the snow settles. So I like to think of all my upset or my reactivity or my fear, my reactions, uh, my anger, uh, as uh, my worries, my negative thoughts, whatever they are, as that shook up snow, there are little molecules of snow and let the snow settle. So right now, see if you can feel the snow settle. You might feel that heaviness in your belly, a little bend in the knees. Yeah, and a nice alignment. Let the snow settle, you'll get very calm and quiet. This would be a wonderful, alive, energized, yet calm and settled place to do everything from. In fact, usually in Aikido class, right, we line up, we sit in meditation, we get in this really cool, wonderful place, and then we get up and we start doing everything. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. We just start going like this. What if we were here? The whole point of those first few minutes in class of meditation is to get up from here and then start doing our warm ups and our techniques and everything in this place. To me, that's kind of a masterfulness. All right, let's work with this, the more feeling of weight underside. So this is gonna be like a kokyo ho uh, with uh, fitness, with spinal rotation, healthy for our spine. So we're gonna just feel this heaviness of the, of the joe. And we're gonna turn, I'm turning to my right, you can go to your right or left, like you're doing a kokyo ho. So arms are open, nice and generous and settle. Feel that settling, that let the snow settle, settle into your center and legs. And usually we stop here, but let's just let go. And then you'll find you can rotate a little bit more and then settle. And then as you let go and settle here, you'll find you can go a little bit more. I'm already looking way behind at a big tree. So I'm getting a lot of spinal rotation and an amazing turn for my kukyo ho, yeah? All right, let's push off from our back foot and that'll bring us over to the other side. Kukyonage, kukyo ho here, right? That's it, as if that's the end, but it isn't. And we don't find more by forcing. This is a total Aikido lesson. We settle, we let go, we release. Now we can turn some more. Wow. And settle, weight underside, let go, turn some more. So now I'm looking way over here. I've really, lengthen my range of motion in my spine. Let's push off from the low back foot, go to the other side. I don't know about you, but I just, I started there at first, now I'm here. So I'm gonna stop, settle, let go, cook your hole, and turn some more. Wow, I'm already getting past that big tree. Stop, let go, turn some more. Whoa. My neck's getting a huge stretch too. Good, let go, turn, push off, go from the feet, go to the other side. Notice your range of motion, how much it's, it's uh, gaining, it's expanding. Settle, 
And a way to gain more, we gain more power, we gain more flexibility, we gain more movement is to let go. It's not to force and then turn some more. Think about turning your chin and your nose and your eyeballs. That'll get you deeply into your spine. Settle, beautiful. So if you think about say a kokyonage, right? There's a katate dori. We go like this and then we go like that. And that's it. And it's kind of stuck and static. What if it was like here, turn, whoa. You can see your uke is having this beautiful sweep of ukemi, right? So they're grabbing me here, that beautiful turning kukunage. Usually that's it. It's like, okay, that's all there is. It isn't. Let go, settle, keep turning. Wow. So you can really add to your aikido movements. You can add to your, your ikios as uke and as nage as we get this more wavy, flexy, expanded range of motion. And you can use your joe to do that. Let's do a few more. So I want you to stand to the side of your joe. It's so important that we strengthen our lower body, our hips and uh, <clears throat> pelvic support muscles, low back muscles. So you're gonna be here, you're gonna raise this arm, you're gonna raise your outer leg, okay? I did this uh, here, okay? And I flex my foot, knee is locked, and we're gonna do some leg lifts. Try to keep everything still, your joe, your body, everything's happening right here. So we've isolated that movement, good. Bend your knee, come forward, and now extend back from your hip. You're using your butt muscles, hip flexors. This is called your psoas muscle. You're stretching it, biggest muscle in your body. You're strengthening the leg you're standing on. Good, stand tall, out to the side, out to the side. Good, let's do a couple combos. One, forward, back, side. Oops, lost my balance for a minute. Forward, back, side. Beautiful, let's go the other side. Easy to do, always balancing out as we do in Aikido. Raising good posture, good form is important because it allows you to isolate exactly what you're doing. If you're bending and doing all these funny things, you'll miss it. So good form is important. Bend that knee, extend back. If this is too hard, you can just do it from standing uh, from more vertical. And then out here, out to the side. You should know that as you activate all of these muscles, that right here is elimination glands, lymph glands. So this is detoxifying for your body. And forward, back, side. This is giving us such focus, such martial focus, and out to the side. Excellent. So there's so many more things you can do. I like to do balance things, use my Joe. Let's do one more uh, for the shoulders. Let's put your Joe in your hands and back. And we're gonna bend forward from the waist, reach with your chin, have your back flat, and try to do some of those pulses where you're just pulling your sternum to the floor. So, and keeping the knees locked and straight as much as you can for some hamstring work. Good, and now bend all the way over, arms are behind you, and just gently pump your shoulders. And see if you can roll down a little more, work with this. So we get a lot of parts of the body and a lot of energy flow, a lot of connection through this, uh, these are kinds of exercises. Good, bend your knees, roll up. Whew. Okay, so I could go on, there's so many more, but I wanna go to some uh, kind of twirling motions that give us work on our, our wrists, help us to get really more facile, more, uh, more skilled with the joke. So in this case, I'm gonna hold in the middle of the joe. I got my right hand and I'll go this way too so you can see. I can maybe, well, I'll go this way first, okay? So remember, we have two sides to the joe and you wanna feel them both energetically, not just one. When you feel one, you also only feel part of your body. Keep yourself in the center. So we're gonna take the top part, we're gonna direct it, uh, we're gonna direct it to the left side, okay? Right hand directed to the left side. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna switch hands and turn the Joe over. Let's do that again, okay? So this gets really fun. Uh, you may already know how to do it, but I just wanna explain it. Top of the Joe is gonna to come to the left side. Feel, so this would could be, you know, this would be one of these, right? We could be using that side of the Joe, just so you know. 
Okay, so we're here, this comes down. We turn it over, that could be a bonk. This hand is up, we're gonna turn it over. And same thing, direct it to the other side, turn it over, hold, let it rotate, okay? Let it spin and then over to the other side. Remember? So that would be if we were Marshall, we're trying to get this, the uh, spin going. Turn this over, switch hands, turn over. So I'm gonna go this way, I hope maybe, I don't know if you can see this way. So I'm on my right side, left top is going down below. Heaven and earth all the time, it's flipping over. Other hand comes in, palm up, thumb up. Now I can turn it over with that hand. This is a combination of thinking about it and letting it happen, <laughs> which is really nice. So we're gonna take the top tip, direct it down, turn it over, other hand, turn it over, other side, turn it over, other side, turn it over, other side, up, rotate around, direct it down, flip it over. That's all in my right hand. Left hand comes in, palm up, thumb, Flip it over. That would be a really nice strike, by the way. And direct it down, turn it over, palm up, turn it over. Down, turn it up, palm up, turn it over, down, turn it over. Okay, so we're getting both sides. Let's see if we can do that. Maybe thinking a little less, feeling a little more. So right side, left side and letting the jaw move fluidly. Right side, left side. This one, you wanna be more in the middle of the jaw, not at that one third area, okay? Good. Now we can do that around our body. So we're just gonna do it in a more boxy plane instead of the cross plane. Same thing though, we're gonna go, let me see. <laughs> okay, I start this turning. I'm just gonna turn over this way. So palm is up, right hand, palms up. Other hand comes in, palm up, takes over. Okay, I'm gonna, hold on, hard to explain. I'm gonna come back here. So now we are coming to the side, putting my hand on straight. It goes behind me. This is just head on, take it, turn it over here, okay? So let me see, we're going here. Uh, uh, I apologize, gotta do this again. <laughs> so we're turning that way, left hand, directs it down behind me. Other hand takes over, comes up, turns it over. So we're just going one direction. Okay, I'm showing you the back side. I'll show you the front in a minute. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna keep it going to the right. Left hand takes over, left side of my body. Hand it over. This is really good for your brain, your backside awareness, your flow, your continuity, okay? Hope you're getting it, I can't really see you. A little hard to explain, but I hope you're seeing it. Now we can switch, we're gonna go that way. Okay, let me see, I wanna go, uh, okay, yeah. Let me get going on this side. Okay, left hand takes it, turns it to the right. Right hand takes over, puts it on the right side behind me. So now we're going the other way. So in the front, both hands are palms up, turns it over, in the back, both hands are palms down. Okay, palms up in front, palms up, switch. So my right and left hands have to talk to each other and work together. Now the hands are down. So this is a fun conversation of the hands. Yeah, and getting fluid all the way around your body. Really starting to enjoy the movement. I like to get a little wavy sometimes. Sometimes I like to stay really still and just let my Joe do all the flying around. Sometimes I like to get wavy. Okay, so we had forward we had to the sides, forward, around, flip it over, around. All right, good. Okay, uh, if we hold the Joe this time at the one third where we usually hold, where it says showman, okay? If we hold there, watch this. This um, I actually went from Saotomi Sensei. A couple decades ago, I remember a way long time ago. Uh, so Melissa Bell since they did a wonderful class on this not too long ago. So what you do is you twirl the Joe, and this is very good for your wrists, your forearms, and your extension. So I have the Joe in my right hand. Let it drop by my right arm and extend. Drop, extend. 
So this is release, extend, release, extend. Elbow is staying pretty close to my side. You don't want to hurt your elbow or your shoulder. So it's safe right here and really good practice. Forward, it's kind of like a nunchucks, okay? You could do that backwards as well. You release it to the back. So I'm here, release just to the outside of the arm and around, extension, extend, extend, extend. Let's do that with the left hand. We're just kind of preparing for what we're gonna do for the strikes. So we're holding it a third, extend, extend, extend. So this is release, extend, right? Yin, yang, yin, yang. We're always getting that kind of joining of opposites those qualities, as Osensei was saying, all these different qualities. You can twirl backwards, goes back and back and back and back. Good, okay, so I hope we're ready. Uh, and that was clear. So the back, we're going this way. Yeah, this is drop to back to the outside or forward, back, back. And all just to the outside of the arm. So here's what's gonna happen, right hand, nice extension. I'm gonna twirl it, and this time directed underneath my armpit, <laughs> all right? So we twirl, direct it down underneath your armpit. It should appear behind your left shoulder, okay? And you wanna hold it, take a step forward with your left foot and strike, okay? So let's do that again, just one side. Right hand, strike, direct it underneath your armpit, kind of diagonally so it appears behind your left shoulder. We'll take a left, a left stance, hum knee, and come over. So this would be a kind of over the head blow. All right, let's do it with the left hand. We can twirl a few times forward and then direct your Joe underneath your armpit. It should be here. Oh, it is, that's great. This is proprioception practice. I don't have to look and go, where is it? It's like, it's there. Oh, I missed, ah, I know where it is. Okay, I'm working my proprioception. Oh, there it is, okay. You can step forward and have a great, Showman strike, okay? You could step forward, you could do knees, ashi, yeah? You could, uh, you, can, you could strike different parts of the body. And you could also put your other hand there, but right now we're doing the one. Okay, right hand, twirl underneath your armpit, should be there, it is, strike. And if you want, you could practice a few strikes from here, put your other hand on. Okay, let's do that again. Left hand, I'll go this way. Left hand, twirling forward. It comes behind my back diagonally. There it is, hallelujah. Step forward, strike. And this is a nice place actually at that point to put in some showman practice. Yep. And once more. So right hand, right hand, twirl, and behind. Oops, there's my Joe. Step forward, strike. And then add your other hand so that you can do some really nice showman practice. And to relate our warm ups to what we're doing, this is not arms and upper body. Everything follows the order that we've been training in our warm ups, our martial fitness. Lower body, center, relaxed shoulders in their sockets, and energy flow from inside the body extension. Okay, I hope you're still practicing. I'm just explaining. All right, so all those warm ups were not just to warm up, they were to train our body movement, they were to train our energy flow. They were to train our focus. All right, let's do one more left hand, forward twirl, and underneath your armpit. My Joe should be there, it is. Step forward, strike, and we'll do some showmen from here. Find that nice body movement. Okay, good. All right, time. I knew I was gonna be a little short here. Um, so we're holding here, we're gonna twirl back, twirl back, let it fall here. Now you're gonna find the other nodal point at that one third step forward let's do a low strike okay and get your hips in there and of course you could do any strike but we're going to do a, a low strike to the knees okay good left hand twirling back let it fall to the outside hold here at that nodal point step forward and really get that hip action boom nice so we were practicing Relax and impact. Relaxed impact. Relaxed boom impact. Okay, let's do that again. Right hand. I'll go this way. Right hand. Holding here at the nodal point. We'll step forward. Left on me. Right. 
Okay, left hand. And now I'm putting my feet together, doing this as an exercise, twirling back. Down here at that nodal point, step forward, right foot, and strike to the, the knees. And again, you can add, it's a nice place to practice. So here we really worked our hips and you can add your strike here, okay? With your other hand. So nice ways to practice. Uh, I hope those are helpful and that you're getting this feeling of both sides. Um, don't have a lot of time. There's a few more things I'd like to do. Uh, I'm gonna bow in with a sword. If you have your bow can, uh, that would be great. This is a short sword. It's a very short uh, sword, Iaito, and it's not in the best shape. <laughs> I've just ordered a new sword. I'm very happy to be doing some Iaito training, which I've done years before, but it's been a while with uh, Wendy White at Shihan. Uh, we're doing them online, it's great. Uh, so I'm gonna share a kata with you from her and relate what we've been doing uh, and also to our MDN practice. Again, this guy goes in my golf bag. I can explain that later. So it's not the best shape, but here we go. So um, with a sword, so typically we'll draw and that's hips cut very clear. Now we know that we use our arm like a sword in Aikido. So this is showman, right? Uh, yoko man. We can do all of our, I like to do all my Tai Jitsu uh, empty handed feeling my sword blades, really nice thing to do. So just for a kind of a fitness exercise and to get the feeling, this would come out to the side. And then this is kokyo, good way to work your kokyos up and over. So that this ikkyo arc, you can now see is an extension of the sword blade. So when you're doing your taijutsu as is, is, uh, nage, you wanna feel that, okay, we're here. And you can do all these kinds of exercises we just did out to the side, kokyo up and really feel these extensions. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit hard to show, but let's say I have a uke coming in. They strike me, right? I do 10 con and then we put our hand on the hilt of the sword, right? They just finished striking. We come in 10 con right beside them. We hold here. All right. And what you want to do at this point. So here's my uke, right? Is this nice rotation. And here you'll see the blade edge is coming out. So we hold their sword, elbow low, kokyo extension. You want to feel, if this was empty handed, you really want to feel the arm, the hand blade, the sword blade. So with this, you can see, all right? And then you're going to throw them, right? We step in and throw. And to take your ukemi, I'm not doing it here on my head. Uh, hard uh, stuff here, but your ukemi is really a sword blade extension. The outer part of your wheel, if you start to think of it, that you're rolling on your arm blade, your sword blade. Not only that, uke and nage are doing very similar, not the same thing. So I just went like this and I threw, and what I like to do is nage is roll right after my uke and see that we're in the same position. We have the same kind of sword extension. So if you got that, they attacked, 10 times, I put my hands on their sword. Yeah, right in between, extend. And you can really feel the sword blade extension step in. They roll, you roll. Then would be on the other side here. Boom, they roll, you roll. And it's actually a nice practice is to hold, if you have mats when you get back to the dojo or you got a mat at home, hold your sword, blade out and roll. Do rolls with your sword. That will definitely keep your full extension and get your wheel out there. But really feel it as a sword practice, okay? So um, I'll just share one kata we've been doing and talk a little bit more about um, uh, some nage waza, but uh, kind of illuminated with the sword. So this is um, a really nice kata where we kind of get out of the way, yeah? So we come up, a big sword cut. So you might think of this as a big ikkyo motion. When they're coming in here, boom. Anyway, so we come here, yeah? And then step forward, we cut. Um, and cut again is an upper, lower, shoo, cut extension. Now this is a cut dough across the midsection and step, gotta get the hips going, shoo, cut. Yes, another showman. This is what we call the chiburi, the blood flick, yes? And to put the sword away, you can't be you know, struggling. There's hip action actually here. 
to get the to get the sword. This is a short sword, sorry. That, so I'm used to a longer one here, and then the goes in here. Hips come back, yes, as we resheathe the sword. So we have cut, yeah, Jaguri. There's hip action, and that uh, Iaido practice is teaching you. So what I want to show you with that. Oh, let me just say one more thing here. So let's say this is uh, empty-handed, shomenuchi, irinage. So here they come, right? They're just a little bit off the line, extend. And a nice extension knocks them off the line. Now I'm gonna enter in, yes? So you can all do this. So just a little, I'm just a little, I mean, haven't ducked or anything. A little, boom, and a little bit of hip turn, a little bit of extension. I've totally taken the center line. Uke's already over here, yeah? So it's not like we're going reacting to that or trying to bat it away, just from here. And we've been working a lot of opening from the center, getting our energy extending. So right here, that little bit, my uke is already off the line. I've already taken the center line. Now it's open, I can enter in. So my hand is on the back of their neck. Picture the uke right here. How often do you see you know, people push here and then they go like this and we get stuck and the two hands aren't working together. We've been working the two hands together, the two sides together, all of our martial fitness, all of our twirls, getting both sides, us in the middle, we're working it, we're getting the flows, the energy flow. So anyways, here we are here, here. What I'd like you to think of is that when you put this hand on, uh, this is your, your uh, back of the neck of your uke, and you cut down, that it's really a cut. Both your hands, work together. So the sword shows that so beautifully. Rather than going push, push, uh, 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 we come in here, we have the hand here, cut. And now as we step in, this is that nice round kind of extension down, yeah? So I hope that's making some sense to you that way. Um, once more, so we come here, just that opening from our center and extension up the center, opening, uke's off the line, step in, cut both hands together, and then both hands, and we're working our uke, spiraling them here. Be the other side. Step in, cut. So I feel both my hands. I feel the taking down of my uke, down to the walk the dog, remember that? Ukemi, they're down there. The way to get them down isn't to push them down, cut them down. If this was kukyuho, kukidosa, we're sitting on our knees, they're holding here. For me, it's open. This is kuku. We get our hand blades going. And now I'm not trying to go, uh uh. This is here, one sword blade. This blade, this blade cuts. Okay? So kuku dosa cut. They're holding here, open, kuku, cut. This hand's cutting their wrist, this hand's cutting here. So we have a little mini ten shinage, but if you can start to connect your hands and literally feel the blade edge, the tegatana of your hands, and it's all working from your center, I think you may be enjoying kukidosa. Uh, yeah, this would be on our knees, of course. Good, okay. I have two more quick things. I'm keeping you after class just a minute. I wanted to share this training aid with you. It's called a balance board, aid board. It's connected, these two guys twirl, and uh, I'm gonna use my shinai for this. Um, it's a wonderful training aid. I'm not for back. I need to be. I think you can see me. So I like to get centered. There's a little circle here. Centered and centered on here. I feel myself centered over the middle. Right here, I'm centered. Now, how to get the lower body and the flow and the spiral through the body? Wonderful trainer. So I'm going to go to my right, turn my feet, my hips come, my shoulders come. Go the other way, turn my feet. Oh, slide over, <laughs> spiral over, feet, hips, shoulders. One of my golf students, whoops, I just lost my balance. Uh, it's very exacting on your balance. Feet, hip, shoulders. One of my students, golf students said, oh, my shoulders get a free ride. Why is that so important in Aikido? Because even in Aikido, we go like this. We miss our center, we miss our legs and feet. Feet, hips, whew. shoulders get a free ride. We don't have to force with our shoulders. In which case we have tension, we block the key flow. When our shoulders are relaxed and in order, this is relaxed, Whew, my key's doing the work, okay? Not my force and shoulders. So beautiful trainer for that. And uh, 
to show you a little bit more. We can do all kinds of, you know, sword practices, Joe practices. Yeah, cuts, 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 cuts. I even do Yaido on here, do golf on here. It's another whole story talking about golf. Okay, so uh, a nice trainer to get you centered, get flow going and work on that order of movement, which is so essential. Okay, if you <laughs> give me about uh, three more minutes, I just want to do a couple exercises for your abs. So I hope uh, that I'm kind of inspiring you about fitness, no more kamikaze, get yourself hurt. Don't be like me and so many of my generation that uh, you know we were old football players, old Aikido players too young, too many joint replacements, aches and pains, can't sit, says, uh, it's, uh, you know, it, prevent that if you're young, rehab, you can get it back if you're a little, I know, slightly, slightly older. Okay, so we've been working on varying parts of our body, just want to work a little bit more on your abs, and it's a kind of a warm down. So you're just going to lie down here, Good. and spread your feet, you can put your hands, clasp them under your head, and gently drop your right knee to your left heel, left knee to right heel. And feel that stretch in your hips, your lower belly, sides, all kinds of things. Knee to heel, knee to heel. It's a really lovely motion. Now drop your left knee to your right heel, pick your right foot up and put it on top. No force, weight underside, let the snow settle. Just feel the weight, give yourself more stretch. Extend your arms out to the side. Look over your left arm. Stretch your body. Breathe. Draw the key flow. Good. Changing. We're going to drop our right knee to left heel. Pick your left foot up and put it on top of your right. Weight underside. Heaviness to give yourself a stretch. Look over your other arm and hand. Oh, very nice. Okay, a little bit of ab work. I'd like you to put your feet together, not like praying feet, but on the floor, let your knees be out and just put your hands underneath your head, clasp your fingers, interlace them. You're gonna lift your head and from here, do some pulsing from your abs. So from here, okay? 10, 15, 25 pulses, just repetitive little movements, not a force, but feel that working those abs. Beautiful. I'm going to go a little quickly, not do quite so many, and then come back down. I'd like you to take your right leg from your hip and just lift it up, lift it up. So straight up. I'm going up towards the sky, go up towards the ceiling. Feel that activation deep in your hip. Good. And now the other side. Lift just one leg up. Find that activation deep in your hips and pelvis. So good for you. Okay, we're going to relax that for the moment. Make your sword hands above your head and make some sword cuts down the center of your body while we get to about your pubic bone and keep doing that so that we're actually strengthening our erector spini muscles, the ones that hold us up. We talked about them before. We're doing them horizontally and we're also kind of greasing and oiling our shoulder joints, which is really good for them. And a little bit of heart rate here. Good. And nice sword cuts. This time we're going to do what I call the full uh, samurai, samurai bliss sword crunch. Okay, <laughs> ready? So you're going to do that motion with your arms and bring both feet up, lift up, crunch and down. So lift the feet, cut and crunch. I can't go so far here. My hakama's in my way to really crunch up and roll up. You might roll up more than I am at the moment. And a few more total samurai sword bliss crunches. Ugh. Great. And one more for your oblique muscles, hands behind your head. Just rock your knees side to side together here. Just stretch it out your low back. Enjoy that movement. And now both knees to the left, lift up your head. You should be looking at your right hip and do a few pulses. This is gonna work your oblique muscles. All of these are important in everything we do in Aikido, as uke or nage. Good, down, legs to the other side, knees to the other side, look up. You should be looking at your hip and we'll do a little pulsing from here. 
Beautiful. From here, let's roll on up. We can stand back up. A little self massage. Tap, tap. Bringing lots of pressure points, lots of meridians, rivers of energy flowing through our body. Thank your body. Breathe. Enjoy. You've done a lot. Oh, related it all. Everything is a relationship, a big relationship. And we're going to bow out here. Uh, I get to be outside in this gorgeous place. So it's what we call the Wu Ji, the Tao, the life energy of the universe. So really, as you bring your hands together for a bow, feel that joining. And that the Qi, the key, the energy inside of you is the same as the energy all around you. These are not different. Life energy of the universe. It's full of intelligence. It's full of power. And it's full of love, full of enjoyment, full of connection. So with that, let us say, Domo arigato gozaimashita. Thank you all so much. I hope you've had a, a journey here. <laughs> Any comments, anybody? How was that? I hope that was um, meaningful and felt good. How are you feeling right now? I want to fly to California to your dojo right away. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my backyard. It's my golf driving range. <laughs> You're welcome. Come train. And uh, uh, I actually, I'm doing uh, classes on the weekends of uh, the fitness stuff, not so related to the martial like we did. But um, if you want more of those kinds of exercises, I do teach. Uh, next one's tomorrow. Uh, it's either a Saturday or Sunday morning once a week. But uh, I can put that, that out. You're certainly welcome to come. Anybody else? And just uh, always good to get a little feedback. I couldn't see you at all. I was partly blinded by the sun and just couldn't go back and forth. So it's kind of hard to know what was going on, but I hope, uh, hope you are all following pretty well. Were well, lots of gratitude in the comments and a few questions. Um, will there be a video of this? I believe there probably will be. Um, you record them, Brian, yeah? I've got it recorded, and yes, I, I should be able to get something out in the next day or so. Um, we also had a question from Sue about the training implement. Is it a, is it, a, he was asking, is it from Goff? Is it, what was um, Actually, <laughs> a good question. It was designed by Tennis Pro, a yeah. couple of tennis pros, and uh, I discovered it about 15 years ago, believe it or not, 12, 15 years ago, when I was uh, a golf pro where I was teaching had one and we were using it in golf again that's another whole story but um uh so it's and i started to use it and realized that all of the key i i key principles that are embedded in this board i've actually taught them a few things i'm proud to say um and that's illuminated their teaching and so i've been using it in golf a lot but as you can see i use it in in aikido and martial arts i've actually uh, shown them to dancers Karate people are working in different ways. Um, it's really fun to give them to kids. Next thing you know, you got these two little people, one on each one, and they're going like this. And, <laughs> but it's a tremendous trainer for your balance, for your hooking up, your movement, getting that order of movement. Um, I, uh, I've been carrying them on airplanes all over the world. I've probably got a few hundred of them in dojos and stuff. I think every dojo should have one, honestly. Um, and you know, a lot of people have them at home. They're on my website. I do sell them i don't i don't mark them up much um you know just a little bit but if you want one you can certainly get one and we could do a little training uh sometime with the eight board because i think it's a tremendous tremendous trainer i actually put ceos on there and these corporate trainings to know what centered feels like and <laughs> they're in they're all nervous and they're and they're disconnected and we get them centered and pretty soon they're moving like this and they go oh now i know what you're talking about it hooks them up right away now get off of there and go talk to your shareholders go hire or fire, go, go talk to your customers, do some, you know, uh, give a talk, give a speech from this place. So it's turned into a really good trainer to quickly get all of our Ike principles to leaders and speakers. Pretty interesting. So yeah, if you want one, you can go ahead and, you know, look on my website on, or get in touch with me. Is that on the centeredway.com? Yeah, it's on the centeredway.com. Just it's, it's spelled like you would expect, centeredway. Yep. Mm -hmm that right now the centeredway.com yeah i actually just got a new batch all of a sudden people are finding them <laughs> and i'm getting, getting people are ordering them i don't even know from where i have to ask them where'd you find this how'd you hear about this and uh so it's pretty cool um i'll tell you one more story i know a lot of people have gone but um one and then we got to run but uh uh 
I was training, gosh, 20 some years ago, right when I was putting Kiai Golf together with Tom Reed Sensei. And if you haven't heard of him, you should. Aiki Bojitsu, he's in Northern California. I call him the Einstein of Aikido. He truly is. So I was at a weapons seminar, a weapons retreat. He was teaching Aiki Bojitsu. He does all these twirls. And he said, there is a perfect Joe strike. And he literally, even before computers were really you know, advanced, he had the algorithms <laughs> for you know, your, uh, your limbs and the distance, the ma'ai from you to your partner. And, and if you moved completely from your center and you, and this was all perfect and the coordinates and the mathematics that you could deliver a perfect drill strike with exponentially acceler exponential acceleration to give a really killer blow to the head or the body uh, effortlessly. And that there is a perfect Joe strike. I was like, wow, I wish I lived closer and I could train with you. I was down in San Diego, he's up here. He goes, take long walks with your Joe. That's all I did. He had had a heart condition or something. And he walked in the mountains up there in Northern Cal. And he said, take long walks with your Joe. And I said, you know, pardon me. I said, Sensei, I hate that shit. And my Joe's not going to talk to me. You know, like teach me something. He said, no, let your Joe talk to you. So I'm in San Diego. I'm walk, taking my walks on the beach. I'm twirling my Joe the way he did and da, da, da. And next thing you know, the ones that tw the forward twirl, back twirl, left, right, left, right. I didn't show them to you, we ran out of time, but they turned into the Kiai golf katas. And I had like a revelation and enlightenment uh, on the beach that day, my Joe talked to me and it said, the golf swing is a kata. It's a repeating form, backswing, downswing, have follow through, same the other way. I have a left-handed golf swing. That's a mirror image of my right-handed golf swing. Golfers can't believe it. It's just cause it's a kata and a pattern in those movements using uh, golfers call their clubs or blades and their sticks. That's the sword and the staff. So this could be another fun uh, thing to, to go into at some point and show the relationships in the circle square triangle, what I call the sacred geometry of golf. But all of that, my Joe talked to me and created the KI golf katas. And I must tell you from a golf point of view, uh, the martial arts created perfect uh, freeze frame of tour pro golf positions and swing and, and, and transitions for coming from Aikido, Joe work, to what's absolutely perfect golf form. Absolutely remarkable. And it was a great confirmation for me that these truly are universal principles of how the body works and how energy flows. So it's pretty fun. Sure. Uh, Jamie, j just a little joke. You started the class with saying something double-double. Here in Canada, people go to Tim Hortons and they get a order a double double <laughs> <laughs> i love tim hortons double double try it to, to tim hortons give me one <laughs> yeah the, the good old airport days when i would travel <laughs> yeah. go to canada <laughs> yeah okay well thank you so much brian sensei can't thank you thank enough you for this so opportunity much, thank you everybody for your um your attention and, and getting into it. Yeah, I hope you can uh, use these. Yeah, and use the recording, repeat them, use them and uh, get creative.